My biggest problem with bubble tea is that I never know when is the appropriate time to drink it. It has a good amount of food in it, so if I have it before dinner, it ruins my appetite. If I have it after the meal, just like other activities, I'm unable to finish. So the only solution is to have it as a meal, and that's what we're doing today. I ranked the top 5 bubble tea shops in the city by popularity, and we're gonna go try them and rate them on 13. Are you excited? So Number 5 will have Tiger Sugar, it's a chain from Taiwan. I think they're the first one to start doing this brown sugar coating thing on the cup. It kinda looks like a tiger, hence the name Tiger Sugar. Before this trend, all boba kinda looked like this, pretty boring. And when it first came out, they marketed it as dirty milk tea. Which is pretty smart, cause deep down, everybody likes it dirty. I'm going to the location on Canal Street where all the fake designers are, and I noticed some interesting one star reviews on Yelp. So Evan P from Texas, Texas said, The drinks and boba qual- Whatever, so basically terrible service. DD from Westchester said is the bad boba ever and the ambiance is tight. Okay. But the majority of the complaints were about the speed to which they prepared the drinks. And Ting Yao claimed that she saw sesame. But I think this is a piece of oolong tea leaf from, you know, the oolong tea she ordered. So with these possible concerns, let's go visit Tiger Sugar. It's cold today, so I need a pair of gloves to hold icy drinks. Seems like there's nobody here, so I'll just order from this kiosk. One of the new flavors that just came out is this brown sugar milk with jumbo boba. When the balls are this big, I have to order. I never customize my order, not only because I have register anxiety, but I also don't feel like a main character. If I pay and leave my number, and it'll text me when it's ready. But I turn around for a brief second without seeing anybody. My drink just magically appeared out of nowhere. Nice job, team. The syrup on the side is pretty standard, and it seems like the jumbo bobas are on the bottom. I wonder if it'll be too big to suck. Never been a problem for me before. So there's like a 10 minute delay in the notification system. It's technically ready 10 minutes before you get the text. Maybe that's where the complaints are coming from. So the syrup and the liquid is all the same, but the jumbo boba are actually not boba. I think they're just very soft, spherically shaped coffee jelly. The texture is pretty soft, so it's easy to slurp, slurp, slurpity slurp them up. Yeah, yeah. So no bad service, actually uh, no service. Didn't take too long and no sesame. I personally prefer a chewy texture, so seven out of 10. And number four, we have the chain I'm Milky. This one's very highly reviewed. I was only able to find two one-star reviews. Caitlin from Philly told us that there's going to be a mysterious price jump at the end, which in my opinion is the scariest jump scare. It can even scare PewDiePie. Also, why is Caitlin an elite? Can I become an elite? No. And Connie complained that the milk is watered down. Maybe too much ice? This picture looks pretty bad. The owner responded to Connie. She said that it's watered down because they use real fruits in their drinks. But I don't think there's supposed to be any fruits in Connie's milk tea. For some reason, it says burger by day. Maybe bubble tea by night or something. This seems to be the most popular item. I milky fresh taro milk. And immediately I'm attracted to these silicone toys. Are these for sale? Can I buy one of these? Like the model? No, I don't think so. Oh, okay. No worries. Anyways, the tower milk is seven fifty after tax eight seventeen. No mysterious price jump. Yeah, yeah. It's connected to this burger slash chicken sandwich place, and it plays this YouTube video on repeat. And to test out the second complaint, I'm not gonna drink it right away, even though it looks really good. I'm gonna put the milk tea in my backpack, and it's gonna make it sweat, make it hotter, make it lose its breath, and we'll taste if it's watery. The ice is pretty much all melted, doesn't seem too watery, but the taro paste is starting to turn gray. Let's shake it up to combine it. I purposely left some chicken thighs on the counter to make the bubble tea appear more appetizing. Am I a genius or what? Let me know in the comments. Time to give it a taste and rate it 1 to 10. The taro and the milk combined to make a pretty balanced, creamy beverage. Surprisingly good. 8 out of 10. X, go give it to you. Fuck wait for you. 
Number three, the Boba Guys is located in Soho, which as you guys already know, is an area I try to avoid. I've never had a non-judgmental interaction here. Maybe I'm just too weird for the public. Since Soho is the Gen Z Times Square, this boba shop is indeed pretty Gen Z. You can tell by the amount of matcha on the menu. It's a pretty good people watching spot. I like this tiny tree. I'm feeling pretty today, so I got a strawberry matcha latte. And look at this lighting, angle, and background. I feel like I'm making a food video. Boba soaked in a layer of strawberry jam in the middle some milk and the top is matcha it is the prettiest one so far i like the layers in drinks they do use paper boba straw though kind of a red flag it tastes like it looks very colorful also pretty artificial it has the aroma of a walmart sugar cookie is the tilting making you insane is this better? But I have to give it to them. The boba themselves are the best tasting so far. Perfectly soft and chewy, more flavorful than others. 5 out of 10. Listen, Here we have another chain from Taiwan claiming to be the number one boba shop. I guess the Taiwanese sentiment towards boba is the same as New York to pizza. But this place is famous for their display of freshly made boba in this walk. It's gone viral so many times on TikTok. And I'll explain to you their process in a professional way. So they take the fluff make it wet, beat it till it becomes dark. Then they take out the slim flim, roll it flat, cutting it into semi slim flims. They put the semi slim flims on top of the ball handling machine, rub the ball handling machine purposelessly and give it a little slap in the back to turn it on. Now the slim flims will be handled into shubanka berries, which has the resemblance of a chickpea. Now when the balls are plentiful, they give it a final rub and dump the shubanka berries in a swirly curly slap. They put a hat on the swirly curly slab and then take it off. At this point, the shubanka berries have released their shub juice. They drain the shub juice by rubbing the shubanka berries against each other. Then the shubanka berries will be stored to the side. Then they'll heat up a copper vat and put some tainter dust into it. The tainter dust, when poked by a wooden spoon, will caramelize and become goose ooze. Now, as a final step, They'll pour the shubanka berries from earlier into the tainter dust and vigorously mix the shubanka berry and tainter dust with the clock and swaggle. And that, my friend, is the entire process of how you make brown sugar boba. I'm going to the location in Hassan Yards and one of the top reviews said they refuse to serve tourists. I mean, I've only been to Hassan Yards twice in my life, so I'm definitely a tourist here. It's actually inside the mall. It took me forever to find it. <laughs> Media. I'm a tourist. That's it? Yeah, that's it. So here's the infamous vat of boba, hot and fresh, covering the cup, and dumped a little bit back. A scoop of ice, some milk. Do they not do tea anymore? Oh, I also ordered some brown sugar boba soft serve. Finally, they put brown sugar on top and torch it to complete the drink with the caramelized flavor and microplastics. What I didn't expect is the boba being super hot. It's a nice contrast with the rest of the drink. I do wish there's some tea in it though. There's only milk, sugar, and a cheese foam. You know the drink is rich when the ice cream is acting as a palate cleanser. Overall, this definitely has great flavor and most satisfying so far, but we've just been having so much bubble tea today, I'm getting a little sick. So giving it a biased score of 7.5 out of 10. This is probably the hottest spot in Manhattan right now for bubble tea. It's a chain from China called Hey Tea. But instead of focusing on the milk, tea, or boba, it claims itself as a cheese shop and also prides in the freshness of the ingredient. As you can see here, they're the originator of the something. These are the popular options and I ordered the top seller. This mango grapefruit cheese thing. I think that's my drink. They put a lot of ladlefuls of cheese foam into that thing. This is like a creative liquid way of consuming cheese and fruit. So so here you see they claim to have no artificial sweetener and all real sugar and immediately in the next slide they offer a zero calorie sugar sweetener to us and here's my drink i'm so excited to daddy chill the inconsistency in this cup is making it very aesthetically pleasing it's like fruit slushy real fruits mixed with boba and cheese foam so i took a sip off camera and man it literally made my day better there's no ice in this drink is mango sorbet. This is some next level beverage experience. Easily 9.8 out of 10. That cup of coffee looks really good though. Considering the quality and the flavor, the price is actually really reasonable. Highly recommend. After all that money spent on water, let's go back and make some at home. It's surprisingly easy to make. We'll need obviously tapioca starch, cocoa powder, and the secret ingredient is Taiwanese black sugar. The molasses flavor is deeper and it's a little sweeter. But you know what other secret ingredient I'm using for this boba? 
love. Starting with 125 grams of starch, to that we'll add 10 grams of cocoa powder for the color. Set that aside, in a separate pot we'll mix in 60 grams of sugar, 5 grams of starch, and 70 milliliters of water. Put it on medium heat, stir constantly till it becomes a thick paste like this. We'll dump in the dry mixture from earlier and stir it a little bit to help us catch all the goo. And then just dump everything to a bowl, rub it a lot with your hand till it comes to a smooth dough. And yes, I know what it looks like, I forbid you from making comparisons in the comments. Then we'll roll it out into a string, you gotta be really gentle cause it breaks. And start cutting it into the desirable, suckable size. And here is what I spent the majority of my afternoon doing, rolling these into balls. A final dust of starch and toss them around. I have prepared a pot of boiling water off camera. 20 minutes of simmering will turn the heat off and put the lid on to steam for 30. Now we'll put it back in the pot and make a brown sugar syrup, which is just sugar and water. The healthier you are, the less sugar you put in, so. Good thing about sugar is that it dissolves and you'll never know how much I put in. Once you can like sorta of split the Red Sea like Moses, it's ready. Check out how shiny and thick they are. Now just spoon these boba in from the side while rotating the cup to get the syrup all covered up. This is my annoying roommate's mug so I don't care if it taints it. Now all we have to do is to fill it with milk and tea. I don't have tea so I'll just do milk. And yes, this is the same gallon from the paneer episode. It has been a month but I blame my dad. Alright now let's give it a taste and rate it 1 through 10. I've never sucked this hard for so little in my life. Pretty soft, chewy, and sweet, similar to the boba guys one. So I resorted to a spoon. Besides the balls being too big, I'll rate this boba a 9 out of 10. Anyways, after all this, I still think boba is an impractical beverage, but it's a great way to spend time with your friends and connect with their culture. At the end of the day, nothing brings people closer than chewing on some black ball. Hope you give this recipe a try at home, and if you visit the city, make sure you stop by Haiti. Alright, thank you. Hey.